what's good Josh your boy Ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers who are damn it I can't even read 10 WWE wrestlers who are actually real life enemies now not all the time when you are in the ring with someone that you actually are like like you actually like them I know one of the notable feuds and it was a real life feud is uh between Brett and uh HBK at the time uh they definitely had some backstage tension between each other like that was legitimately real that they didn't like each other uh i'm sure they buried the hatchet now hopefully but back then they didn't like each other another noticeable one obviously is brock lesnar and uh matt riddle brock does not like matt at all i don't think he even wants to have a match with him. he just does not fuck with matt riddle at all so this should be an interesting one man i want to see any other actual real life enemies or i wouldn't say enemies but like tension between wrestlers backstage uh appreciate all the love and support man wrote to 90k and you already know what to do so. when you're a wwe superstar you're not gonna get along with every person in the like locker I room said. naturally the locker room is full of different personalities and sometimes these personalities are gonna clash these real life feuds are often kept private, but sometimes they spill into the public sphere and the superstars oh, reveal wow. private details as to why they have a strong dislike for each other. Or which wrestlers were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE you know, wrestlers and, uh, who are real life enemies. Some, uh, some beef with each other. I know, I did see reports of a lot of people weren't a big fan of Enzo Amore backstage, but I didn't know he had beef with Roman. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily Roman wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10, Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins. Oh, I didn't know now, this The issues either. between Riddle and Seth Rollins began all the way back in 2019 when Riddle's wife took to Instagram to post a rather negative post regarding the appearance of Becky Lynch. This didn't sit well with Rollins and he made his quest to didn't never notice. work with Riddle in any capacity. During a 2021 interview with TalkSport, Riddle addressed the issues between himself and the former WWE Champion and he revealed, I'll be honest, I met Seth multiple times and he's met me and I don't think we'll ever be best friends. I don't think we like one another, we're just two different people. Although we both love wrestling, I know my significant other said something about Becky that they didn't like and I also didn't like or agree with it. Seth didn't like me after that and I don't think Becky liked me or my wife either, which is understandable. It is what it is. Well, Rollins and Riddle ended up working together in early 2022, so it's unclear what the status of their working relationship is now. The two, in all likelihood, still have a ton of negative thoughts in relation to each other, but they decide to put their differences aside when they faced off in the ring. Number 9, Becky is That's how you're supposed to do it, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's how you're supposed to, like, you know, be professional. I think this one, Becky Lynch and Nia Jax, that one makes sense. That one makes sense with the whole... Her breaking uh, Becky's nose and stuff like that. That one makes sense. Key Lynch and Nia Jax. And although nothing has ever been confirmed by either woman, it's common rumor that Becky Lynch and Nia Jax aren't the biggest fans of each other. This all began in 2018 mm -hmm. when Nia legitimately broke Becky's nose on Raw. This was done with a stiff punch to oh Becky's face. God. And since that incident, fans have called out Nia for being one of the most reckless and most unprofessional. And because of that incident, Becky became a super mega star. That was her stone cold Steve Austin moment of she became a badass. That blood on her face, she's smiling. People were like, yo, she's she's it. And from that point on, Becky was you couldn't stop it. She was the most over person. She was more over than any man at that time. So because Nia Jax messed up, it made her push even more better professional talents to ever step in the WWE ring. Now, Becky and Nia never worked together in a match following the incident, and fans have always put this down to the two not liking each other. Now this does have some weight to it, as it does seem strange that WWE have never booked the two to face off, especially how publicized Becky's injury was. Since her release in 2021, Nia has gone public on social media in relation to her thoughts on everything from politics to the COVID vaccine. Unfortunately, some of these viewpoints were controversial yeah. and offensive to some. She even decided to compare compulsory mask wearing to the horrors of the Ukrainian war. This led to Becky unfollowing Nia on social media, finally supporting the notion that Becky isn't Nia's number one fan. 
Number eight, AJ Styles and Paul Heyman. Oh, this is an the phenomenal one. AJ Styles and Did Paul Heyman had a great relationship whilst Heyman was running Raw between 2019 to 2020. AJ was one of Heyman's personal favorites, and he truly believed that AJ was one of the best to ever be under the WWE umbrella. However, this relationship completely disintegrated in 2020 after AJ's good friends Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson were released from WWE. Mm -hmm. AJ believed that Heyman somehow had something to do with this release, or if he didn't have a direct part in it, he should have lobbied for them to stay in the company. Now, this seems like a huge overreaction on the part of AJ as Heyman wasn't involved in these key decisions, he was just part of the creative team. Nevertheless, the once strong relationship was now hostile, and AJ wants nothing to do with Heyman. The two Damn. will even be separated and set to different shows, and the two working together ever again is likely never gonna happen. Number seven, Ronda. R Didn't know that. Um, I don't know. Paul Heyman was just more of a, in my mind and a lot of people's mind, he felt like more of the just a figurehead, really. Like even though he wanted to do like creative things and stuff like that. When it comes to Vince, bro, he has the final say so. So a lot of the shit that they come up with just kind of get get tossed to the side, to be honest. So I don't know if he really had any type of that type of pull. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully they probably resolve their issues. I'm not sure if they did, but uh, I'm. it's just when it comes to releases, I don't think he really had that much control, but I could be wrong. Rousey and Alexa Bliss. Didn't know this when was a thing Rousey either. joined the WWE in 2018, one of the female stars she worked with a lot was Alexa Bliss. Although it's unclear until several months later, the two didn't have the best time working with each other. According to Bliss, Ronda was overly stiff with her in the ring and she yeah. was almost out for a year due to Ronda's recklessness. Damn. This was later supported by Nia Jax in several interviews who claimed that the relationship between the two wasn't great and Nia heavily implied that Ronda took liberties with Bliss. And Bliss continued to support the rumors of hostility between the two when Ronda returned to the company in 2022. When Ronda won the Women's Royal Rumble, Bliss would tweet, What a surprise, uh. clearly showing a lack of excitement for Ronda's return to the company. Number six, Goldberg and Matt. Yeah, <laughs> Ronda was fucking ragdolling Alexa Bliss. And, you know, Ronda was super green, so she she was still kind of like, like very stiff. Hell, she's still very stiff with her moves and stuff, but it makes sense. It makes that I can see them having some issues. Matt Riddle. A WWE superstar, Matt Riddle, never shies away from voicing his opinions. Matt Riddle's on Throughout here again. his wrestling career, one of the superstars he's never been fond of is Goldberg. Riddle enjoys mocking Goldberg's wrestling style and has publicly declared that Goldberg is far too dangerous to be in the ring. Naturally, these comments don't sit well with Goldberg, and in a 2021 interview with Days In, Goldberg would use a rather crude word to describe what he thinks of Matt Riddle. He would state, Yeah, the cocky kid, Riddle spouting off his mouth in the beginning, and I didn't appreciate it very much by any stretch of the imagination. But the guy has put a lot of freaking hard work and a lot of hard work, and he's dedicated his life to this business. Whether I like him as a human being or not, I have to understand and appreciate his passion for the business and mm, his work ethic. That's big of him. Because he works hard and that I appreciate as an athlete and as a human. He's a prick sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> that's him. That's his character. So am I. Number All five, right. Becky that Lynch and sure Charlotte him. Flair. Yeah. Becky now, Lynch this is definitely documented. That Y'all remember, I think it was last year, that whole title exchange? How fucking awkward that was on SmackDown? Shit was just awful. That whole title exchange stuff, that whole segment reeked of legitimate tension and heat backstage. Like, they didn't really fuck with each other. Lynch and Charlotte Flair were once best friends, but in 2021, fans found out that that was no longer the case. The two popular WWE stars used to be inseparable, but over the years, as both progressed in their careers, they were torn apart. They once again traveled from city to city with each other, but now it looks like they don't even speak. It's unclear what's led to this, but it's believed that it has a lot to do with Becky's rise in popularity and this rubbing Charlotte the wrong way. Additionally, both men have managed to find the loves of their life, and this means that they have less time to hang out with each other and possibly discuss any issues in their friendship. Number four, Sonya Deville and Charlotte Flair. Oh, yeah. Now, it's not just Becky Lynch who has personal issues with Charlotte Flair, as Sonya Deville isn't exactly Charlotte's number one fan either. The issue between the two was highlighted following the infamous championship mm -hmm. exchange segment in 2021, 
The segment was to see Becky and Charlotte Flair exchange their respective championships, but Charlotte decided to go off script in order to make Becky look as bad as possible. Yeah, dropping a title like that, one, it, dis it makes the championship title seem like a joke. You just dropped it. It's like you don't even care. You know what I'm saying? About it. So that's one. And two, it was like Becky would have to pick it up. It was going to make her look kind of weak. Like, damn, bro. Like, what? The issue here was that in doing this rather unprofessional act, it wasn't just Becky that Charlotte was making look bad. It was WWE official Sonya Deville too. Sonya was in the ring for the ceremony and Charlotte going off script made her character look weak and seriously damaged the legitimacy of their on-air authoritative presence. Mm -hmm. When they came back through the curtain, Sonya was rightly furious and reports stated that she was ready to fight Charlotte, but it's unclear if anything of a physical nature went down. It's probably for the best that Charlotte keeps away from the former MMA star. Number three. I didn't even know she was she was in MMA like that. I didn't know that. Like legitimately, why don't they like utilize that? Like actually built that up. What happened? That's crazy. I did not know that. The Matt Riddle and Brock Lesnar. Oh, Riddle believes that he should be the, the one video. who retires Lesnar. And whilst Riddle never said anything too derogatory towards Lesnar, Lesnar absolutely loads the former U.S. champion. In fact, when the two encountered each other backstage at the 2020 Royal Rumble, Lesnar informed Riddle that they were never going to work with each other in any capacity. They shut down Riddle for a while, but it wasn't before too long that Riddle was once again declaring that he should have been the one who retires the UFC and WWE legend. The two have actually worked together following this hostile exchange, but these were in multi-man matches and the chance of the two working together yeah, in yeah. any singles program... <laughs> and then Riddle just got fucking F5'd and sent home. That whole match... That Elimination Chamber match was one of the just one-sided matches I've ever seen in Elimination Chamber. Outside of Goldberg, but then, you know, Triple H, Evolution, Sledgehammer. And that made sense. This one makes sense, but it was like, bro, they're all former champions. People that actually beaten him in the ring, beaten Brock, and he just squashed them like they were jokes, bro. Everybody in that ring was a joke. Every single person compared to Brock, joke. I was like, oh my God. Oh, Jesus. I'm rather slim. Number two, Booker T and Corey Graves. Oh, so in this, 2018, they the real life issues between Booker T and Corey Graves became the talk of the wrestling world. Booker on his podcast would claim that Graves was the reason why he wasn't a commentator on Raw, and key figures in the WWE believed that Booker was going to randomly attack him. Booker would state, Corey Graves, right now, I wouldn't necessarily say he's on my bad side, but he's the reason that I'm not on Monday Night Raw right now. Because you know what? A lot of people in the company thought I was going to jump on him. I was going to do something bad to him. I was going to drag him. I was going to take him out to the woodshed. <laughs> I was going to beat that man so bad. I was going to beat him and tell God this damn. man, say, please, 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 damn. just don't beat me anymore. Now, eventually, Graves appeared on Booker's podcast and the two claimed that they were working an angle. This absolutely baffled fans, huh? and even Michael Cole pondered why the two non-wrestlers would work an angle. Yeah. What was the payoff? Yeah. This led to fans to speculate that the two did have true real-life tension, and the WWE forced them to try and resolve their issues. It's unknown what the true nature of the relationship is, but there's no way Booker's comments were said with the initial intention of working a storyline. Yeah, line. definitely And number not. one, Matt Riddle. God damn, Matt Riddle. Motherfucker. The moral of this list, Matt Riddle <laughs> is not liked. By a lot of people. Jesus Christ. Roman Reigns. Now if there's one person you don't want to make an enemy out of in WWE, Definitely it's the Roman. resident top guy in the company. Unfortunately, it looks like this is exactly what Riddle has managed to achieve. In a 2021 interview with Bleacher Report, Riddle would claim that he could beat Roman Reigns in a real-life fight. Oh, he stated, Lord. No disrespect to Roman. He seems like a swell fella, but at the same time, it's like when people say they're a good parent. You know what? If you were a good parent, your kids would be telling you you're a good parent. When he's saying acknowledge me or I move the needle, no you don't. You're related to the rock. Shut up. Like I'm not <laughs> impressed. I can beat you up in a real fight. So shut your mouth. Oh my god. Bro, what the fuck? Riddle don't care, bro. I want to retire, Brock. <laughs> I can beat you in a real fight, bro. I just watched a clip. Uh, I'm I'm recording this after the whole segment of Riddle giving Roman Reigns a knee to the face in their their little segment on Smack on SmackDown. What the hell, Riddle? God damn, damn you, bro! I get it, just you know, trying to 
stay, you know, keep kayfabe alive a little bit. But, bro, he he's really, like, like, bro, I can beat you. I can beat him up in a real fight. Like, bro, Roman's not that guy. <laughs> and these comments overstepped the mark, and they went beyond Riddle trying to work an angle. Yeah. A few months later, he revealed that Reigns was furious with his comments, and that he was informed that he needed to write an apology letter. This is something that the tribal chief outright rejected. Well, there you have it, folks. 10 WWE Wait, did wrestlers he say he had to write an apology? To write an apology. And these comments overstepped the mark and they went beyond Riddle trying to work an angle. A few months later, he revealed that Reigns was furious with his comments and that he was informed that he needed to write an apology letter. This is something that the tribal chief outright rejected. Well, there you have it, folks. Bro, the more of this list, Matt Riddle doesn't care. A lot of the top guys don't like him. Goldberg don't like him. <laughs> Roman Reigns don't like him. <laughs> Brock Lesnar don't like him. Damn, bro. <laughs> Come on, Matt, bro. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Seth Rollins don't like him. And his wife, Becky Lynch, don't like him. God damn. These are top guys in the company. Oh, oh man. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That's that's crazy. Comment down below. Let me know. Do y'all like Matt Riddle? Do y'all think he's a cool person? Let me know. Y'all got some beef with Matt Riddle. I don't know. Who else got beef with Matt Riddle? But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 80. Not 80K. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.